In this video, we're going to be looking at binomial expansion. So here we've got Pascal's triangle. Now you might have seen this pattern before. And the way it works is every number is the sum of the two numbers directly above it. And this is what's going to help us do our binomial expansion. So when do we use binomial expansion? We can use binomial expansion to expand brackets such as these ones. Let's look at a particular example, something like this. Now, you can expand this bracket at a time. However, that will take you a very long time. In GCSEs, you might have done double brackets and then triple brackets. If you remember correctly, the triple brackets took a long time. So having four brackets will take much longer and you might make a mistake. So with binomial expansion, we have a really nice, quick way of doing it. So here I've got some brackets and I've expanded them all for you. Of course, some of them didn't take that long. For example, a plus b to the power zero, that was simply just one. a plus b to the power one, well, that was simply a plus b. And then we have a plus b to the power two, and that's double brackets, and you've done that a lot of times in GCSE. A plus b to the power three, you might have done a few times. And I've got that here. And I've also expanded a plus b to the power four, and they've all been nicely simplified. So how does Pascal's triangle come into this? Now I'm going to put some ones in front of the letters, for example, a and b, because that one won't make any difference. So here we've got some ones and nothing's changed. Next, I'm going to get rid of all the a's and b's and those powers. And wow, we've got Pascal's triangle here. Isn't that amazing? So now you've probably got a little bit of an idea how Pascal's triangle will help us do our expansions, but we're not there yet. So let's bring all those a's and b's back. Okay, so here we've got the expansion simplified again. Now the next thing we need to know about expansions is what's happening with the a's and the b's and the powers. Because we know about the coefficients now, they just come from Pascal's triangle. Let's look at the expansion of a plus b to the power of 4. So first you'll notice we have a to the highest power, and that's the power of 4. And b is non-existent in this term, or you can say b is to the power of 0 if you like. Now the next term you'll see a's power has gone down. But b's power, but b which wasn't there, or you could say had power 0, has now got a power 1. So b suddenly appeared. So a's power has gone down, and b has, and b's power has gone up, and it appears in this term. So you can probably see what's happened in the next term. a's power has gone down again to 2, and b's power has gone up again by 1. So a's power is 2 now, and b's power is also 2. And in the next term, a's power is going to further 1 down, and it's just become a to the power 1, or just a. And b's power is rising, so b's power is now 3. And finally, a's power is going to 0, meaning it's not even there, because anything to power 0 is 1. And b's power has gone up, so b's power is 4 here, in the last term. So that's the pattern with the a's and the b's and the powers. And we also know where some of these numbers came from. They came from Pascal's triangle. From all this information, we should be able to expand some brackets. Another thing I want you to notice before we carry on is if you look at any term, if you add up the powers on a and b, they'll always add up to 4, which is the power of the main bracket. And that's always going to be the case. So let's go ahead and look at a question where instead of a and b, We've got some terms. Okay, so we want to expand 2x plus 3 to the power of 4. Now, since this is our first example, I've got the expansion from before in front of us as well to help us. So we're going to expand it with descending powers of x, meaning that we're going to have x to the highest power first. So our a is going to be 2x, and that 2x is going to be to the power of 4, just like you can see in that general expansion at the top. So our a is 2x and our b is 3. So our a which is 2x is raised to the power of 4 first. And our b which is 3 is non-existent in the first term. 
Okay, so let's go to the next term. In the next term, the a's power, which is our 2x, has gone down by 1. And our b's power, which was non-existent, has now gone up. And now it's to the power of 1. So we have that 3 there, to the power of 1. And you also probably know where the 4 came from. That came from Pascal's triangle. The first term also had 1 in it, but of course we didn't need to put it there. Now let's go to the next term. In the next term, the 2x's power has gone further down by 1. And 3's power has gone up. And where did that 6 come from? Well, it came from Pascal's triangle. Now before I reveal the next one, I'd like you to take a moment to think what it might be. Okay, so I hope you had a chance to figure it out. So let's have a look. So you can see 2x's power is going to further down, and now 2x's power is simply to the power of 1. But 3's power, which is the b, that power has gone up, and now it's to the power of 3. And we need that 4 there. And where did that 4 come from? Well, Pascal's triangle again. Finally, let's go to the last term. 2x becomes non-existent. The a becomes non-existent because its power is 0. And the 3's power is raised to the final highest power, which is 4. And of course, we need a coefficient from Pascal's triangle, but it's going to be 1 here, so we don't need to put it in. Now, what I'd advise is with Pascal's triangle, I'd take some time to memorise it, maybe up to the row which has 1 followed by 5. And that row is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. If you want to go a bit further, that's fine too. But up to at least the 1, 5 row, I'd go ahead and memorise it. Because it's going to help us a lot. Otherwise, you'll be using your calculator to work it out. And your calculator can tell you these numbers. However, it does take a long time. Because you have to keep pressing it into your calculator. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, so we finished our expansion, but of course we do need to simplify it. So let's start by simplifying some of these brackets. Since a lot of you watching this video are doing your A-levels, maybe in your first year, I'm going to assume you're okay with this simplifying I've done here. And we can finally simplify the terms a little bit further and get our final most simplified form. And that's that. We've managed to expand 2x plus 3 to the power 4 with not too much trouble. So we're going to try binomial expansion again. And this time our bracket is to the power 3. So it's actually a little bit more simpler. And those coefficients we need from Pascal's triangle are 1, 3, 3, 1. And I hope you memorize up to at least the fifth row. Now, in this example, we're going to try doing ascending powers of x. That means we want the lowest power of x first, and x's power should increase as the expansion goes on. So, if we're going to do that, we should really let a be 4. And then b could be the x squared here. Okay, so let's go for it. If you really want to have a try yourself first, go ahead and pause this video. Okay, so of course we said a is going to be 4, since we're doing ascending powers of x. So the 4 is going to be to the power of 3. And our b, which is x squared, of course is going to be non-existent here. It's to the power of 0, so we don't need to put it in. And from Pascal's triangle, the first coefficient is 1. So again, we don't need to put that 1 in. So what we're going to do next? Well, 4 to the power of 3 is going to go down. It's going to become 4 to the power of 2. And of course, that x squared is now going to appear. It's going to be to the power of 1. And don't forget, we need Pascal's coefficient. And you should know it's going to be 3. So now we can go to the next term. 4's power goes further down by 1. And it becomes to the power of 1. And x squared term's power goes up. Now x squared is now going to be to the power of 2. And of course, don't forget... Pascal's coefficient is going to be 3 again. Because remember for this row, Pascal's coefficients are 
one, three, three, one. Now going to the final term, of course, four's power is going to reduce to zero, which means it's going to be one. So it's really non-existent here. We don't need to put it in. And finally, x squared's power is going to go to the highest power, which is three. And the coefficient from the triangle will be one here. So we've done the expansion. We just need to simplify it now. So I've used all the powers now in the brackets and we simplified it to this stage. And you should be able to do that. Let's finally put it in the simplest form. And there it is. So binomial expansion doesn't look too difficult. But while you're finding it easy, you must go ahead and practice a lot of questions. Just keep expanding loads of simple questions before you go on to the tougher ones. Okay, so let's look at our final question. I've got 3x plus 5 to the power of 5. And in this question, it wants the coefficient of x cubed in this expansion. Now, some of you might want to expand it all out and simplify it and see what's in front of the x cubed. But that's going to be terribly long. And since the question only wants the coefficient of x cubed, we can actually do a shortcut to that. We don't need to do the full expansion. OK, so if we're looking at the x cubed term, well, when are we going to get the x cubed term? It's going to be when that 3x here is going to be to the power of 3. So we know that's going to happen for sure. So we've got 3x to the power of 3, and we know that's going to be the case if we're going to get x cubed. But our b is 5 here. What power must the 5 be? Now, early on in the video, if you remember, I said the powers always add up to the main power of the brackets. And the main power of the brackets is 5. So if 3x is to the power of 3, that 5 must be to the power of 2. Now, next, we need Pascal's coefficient. This time, I'm going to tell you how to get it on your calculator. And you use the NCR button that tells you what coefficient you need. Now, in the NCR button, what is the N and what is the R? Well, N is the power on the main bracket, which is 5. So we know what N is. Now, what is R? Well, R could be any of the two powers on A or B. So 3x is to the power of 3. You could use R as 3. And the 5 is to the power of 2. So you could put R as 2 as well, and it won't make any difference. That's because of the symmetry of Pascal's triangle. So it's up to you what you use R as. But NCR is what's going to tell you Pascal's coefficient. So I've chosen 5C3. And on your calculators, it's on the shift divide button for a lot of them. So that's how you're going to use the NCR button. So you press 5, shift divide, and then 3 and press equals. And it will give you that coefficient. And the calculator gave us 10. Some of you might not need the calculator because you've done the correct thing and memorize some of those lines of Pascal's triangle. And applying the powers, we get 27x cubed and 25 for 5 squared. Let's finally simplify that. We get 6750x cubed. So the coefficient of x cubed is 6750. And this way was much shorter than expanding the full brackets. And just before we finish, I'd like to talk a little bit more about using the calculator to get these numbers from Pascal's triangle. So, as I said before, we're going to use the NCR button on the calculator. And on most calculator, you'll find it on the shift divide button. So looking at the expansion of a plus b to the power 4, let's have a look at what you'd need to enter into the calculator to get these correct numbers 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And it's these ones here. Of course, the n is the same in all cases. The n is the power on the main brackets. And the r is what is changing in all the cases. And because of the symmetry of Pascal's triangle, you've got two options for each number, as, as I've shown here. And you can see that r is always the power of a or b. And lastly, if you don't have a calculator, and, some, and in some very difficult questions where they've got algebra, where you can't use the calculator, we've got another way of getting those numbers from Pascal's triangle. And it's this lovely formula here. 
n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. And you should know what factorial is from GCSE. For example, 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So you should be able to tell me what 5 factorial will be. And 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this is what you'd use if you don't have a calculator. And you'd use it for every number you need from Pascal's triangle. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.